Okay, back for part two here. I'm going to try and pick up the pace because I know you want to get back to your uh, you want to get back to your programs, but but um, there are some more things I want to talk about. Uh, one of them is pretty clear, I think, in Scratch is this idea of sequence of commands. The order that the blo the blocks are executed will vastly change what happens in the program, and that that's pretty clear. I'll uh, I'll Tell you what I mean after I after I type in the sentence. Change the order of the commands. Um, the order that the commands are executed. Order that the commands are executed. The outcome changes. And I'm going to squish that back. So what do I mean? Well, in Scratch, it's pretty easy, right? I'm going to detach that one and throw it, throw it in the garbage. That when I do this, this thing, move 100 steps, then say hello, if I were to break that off and do it in the other direction, it says hello, and then moves 100 steps. Well, that's a lot different, right? We can see that as our programs become more complicated, what order we put the blocks in um, is pretty important. I'm going to, maybe you're, you're, you're following along here. These pictures I'm going to put in here. Um, and I'm just going to say that these two things are not the same. Uh, need that tool. That, not the same as that. And that's all we want to say about sequence of commands. Um, and hopefully you're keeping along with this, this note. Don't be afraid to ask for help in your note taking. Um, the next page, you go on this blue arrow. Your blue arrow might be over here, it might be up here, but you get on the blue arrow to get to the next page. And one thing that's, that's very common in, in uh, computer science is the idea of control structures. And the control structures in Scratch are these yellow ones. Right, these yellow ones to start the program and to the end the program. Those are things that occur in all languages. Um, but here, an infinite loop. An infinite loop was 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 uh, pretty easy here. This is this is like a never stop loop, right? And which one is that in Scratch? You can probably guess. Well, it's the forever loop, right? And so here, if I wanted to put that command in there that this, it's going to make the cat move 100 steps in the direction forever. Bam, 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 off goes the cat, gone. Uh, and that actually stops once the cat can't go any further. This doesn't actually keep running forever, and that's something that's built into Scratch. But what would the, uh, oh yeah, I want to actually scoop that, scoop that little loop, scoop the loop, Put that in there. That's an infinite loop, right? It's going to keep going forever. Well, not forever. We'll stop the computer ex ex um, at some point. But this is what the code might look like. A loop, an end loop, and then it keeps doing this over and over again. Moves the cat 100 steps. Loops. 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 And then should keep going forever. And of course, the computer actually knows our scratch actually stops at, at some point. In contrast, we have the counted loop. The counted loops are maybe a little bit easier to, uh, to uh, understand or control, right? Um, the number, oh, it's a big font again. The number of times a loop happens. By a loop happens, it means this command that, you know, it does it and then does it again, and then does it again, and then does it again, and then does it again. That's a loop. The number of times a loop happens is counted and controlled. And once we get to our text-based language, Turing, we'll see there's a, actually a, a, a number of ways to do that. Um, I'm going to make that 20, because then I can squish this in, squish it in. There, that looks nice. And what does that one look like? That's that repeat a number of times, right? So I'm going to get my my uh, command out there. I'm going to put my repeat 
I think in the note it said four. Repeat four times. So this is only going to be executed four times. And so I'm going to put that in there. And what would that look like? Well, in pseudocode, in, in written code, it might look like this. Just loop four times. And how we actually count the four times is going to be important once we get to our text-based touring. Um, but let's keep going. Decisions. Decisions are common in, in um, Scratch. We do them all the time. Right? So, for instance... Um, what do I mean by decision? Test a condition, and we'll execute a statement if it's true. Execute a statement if it's true. So, for instance, an easy one that we used almost almost right away, I think it was our, our second program, we used this one, which was the if on edge bounce. Right? If on edge bounce. So let me move the cat back if on edge bounce. While the condition was the condition was if 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 it's on the edge, if it's touching the edge, then bounce. Well, what what that might look look like in um in code is if it's touching the edge, then change the direction of the cat. The cat goes left instead of right, or if it's going right then it goes left. Okay, so that's one of them. I want to show you because we've used the other ones quite a bit as well. So that's one of them. I'm going to pull that one out and take a picture of it. Smile. Bam, there it is. The other one that we use a lot is this one, right? If condition, right? And this this little tr this little diamond thing in here is actually a condition. So, and there was lots of different conditions. If where is it? Mouse down if whatever if position of cat is what you know we can we can check conditions if touching the edge right if touching edge there's a condition and you probably notice there's some in the operators too greater than less than equal to ands ors nots all of this is good computer science um, if touching edge then we could say uh, change the direction right move the direction the other way move you know turn 180 degrees point in direction whatever um, and I'm going to take a picture of that that's the if statement now and so I'm also going to say here in here somewhere uh, the condition in scratch in scratch condition is a diamond type shape oops now will that fit I'm gonna am I gonna have to make that smaller ah, I know what I can do I move that down. No, I can't. I'm gonna maybe make that. Ah, that doesn't look too bad. That looks damn. Uh, nesting. Nesting is when we put one control statement inside another control statement. So uh, let me write that in there. Caps locks on. One control statement inside another. And this idea, the nesting is like the the nested dolls. Have you ever seen those Russian nested dolls where the big one has got a little one inside it, inside the next little one there's a little one, and the dolls fit inside the dolls? That's the idea of nesting. And a nested loop. So, for instance, is I, I could put that condition, that condition inside here, right? Or whatever. It doesn't matter. This is a nested condition the inside one and the outside one and already your programs are getting uh, fairly complicated where we've got um, you know three or four sets of nested conditions inside of inside of inside of inside uh, and that's fine and that's you know one of the ways scratch is a real programming language 
All right, I'm going to put that in there. And notice this is what the code would look like. The loop is kind of like the outside outside uh, structure. The inside structure is an if. And uh, oh, we've got it a little bit different. If touching edge, then, oops, we never changed directions in there. But you'll, you get the idea of, of the nested uh, the nested structure. Um, I think that's all. Is that all you got? Is that all you're, in your note? That's all in my note, too. Um, so thanks for being patient about uh, about that. Where did this piece go? Where were we going to put this piece? We got a piece to no one here. Oh, this is one of the, the decisions, right? So this goes in here. Save your note under save as, and then you put it in your your uh, notes. I, I don't have my note uh, folder there, but it's under my I, ICS20 unit one scratch. I should have notes in here, but uh, Mr. Restall is failing ICS20 because he doesn't have his file structure right. Um, but I would save that there, okay? Um, and that's it. Get back to your programs. I'm sure you've got something, uh, something uh, fun to, to be working on rather than taking notes.